Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to October. Carolina Weather Authority meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg. I hope you're enjoying this nice, mild, sunny weather we're having today. Another little bit of a cool shot coming towards the weekend. Uh, should be great for those of you getting a little bit of fall foliage leaf peeping in in the highest mountains over the next couple of weeks. Uh, this is definitely what we want to see after a pretty wet summer. All right, so the tropics are starting to get active again. We had a nice little break for about a week, but um, it is 2020, and we've expected an active year, and nothing uh, showing long-term signs of stopping when that comes. Now, our, our um, concerns shift to the southern Gulf and the Caribbean over the next few days. You've seen some of my videos potentially already that have gone into that. Things, of course, are going to change from day to day, uh, but I do want to give you guys the latest, and uh, I'm not trying to sound the alarm for everybody uh, until we know for sure what's going to happen. Just uh, be on the alert at this point. Just be aware that there's stuff out there that could be a threat. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, of course, if you want the latest videos, and, and invite your friends over as well. In the Caribbean, we're watching two potential systems for development over the next week. The first one now has a high chance of becoming a depression or a weak tropical storm, probably by Saturday, we think. And this is going to be, uh, we're having models being run on it. A uh, 40% chance that it develops into a cyclone by Saturday morning and 70% chance, I think, by Sunday, probably. Uh, the next system, not a, an or, nothing of organization at this point, but could develop when it gets to the Central and Western Caribbean, maybe between Jamaica and Southern Cuba or Southwest Cuba here by towards the middle and second part of the next week. The satellite image shows that the Caribbean has gotten much busier than a few days ago. Uh, actually, we've got a, a huge uh, surge of uh, systems coming across the Atlantic once again. It's October, but the waters are still very warm. They're above average. Let's just pretend it's still mid-September. At least that's what we think in the tropics. Now, the U.S. is in great shape right now. We've got, uh, other than South Florida, a lot of sun out there, a, a trough that's digging across the eastern U.S., huge ridge in the west, uh, front draped across uh, Florida and going down into the Bay of Campeche and all the way across Mexico, uh, where there's some potential development here in the Gulf of Tehuantepec. Uh, but the areas we're watching are number one and number two. We'll keep a close eye on number three, but right now nothing of concern. Uh, number one, this is Invest 91L now. We've got some models that are starting to get run on it, and it's not very organized, but does have a ton of rain and moisture with it. It's kind of an open tropical wave at this point uh, to the east of Honduras and southwest of Jamaica. A lot of rain west of Jamaica. Uh, maybe approaching the Caymans could be pretty darn wet if you're planning a cruise there this weekend. So this is the area we're watching. Maybe a circulation gets going here in the next couple of days. From tropicaltidbits.com, here's an estimation of where a low could form, but we don't have westerly winds yet that could close off a circulation. So it's not an imminent threat, but down the road it could be once it gets up into the Northwest Caribbean. And here's two reasons for that. Number one, the water is bath water. It's super warm there. Number two, wind shear does drop off over the next couple of days with an upper level high pressure system forming. That lowers the winds that could blow those storms off and allows maybe a closed circulation to form. Uh, so right now we don't have a lot of info from the models yet. It's still brand new to them, but general gradual strengthening shown through about 60 hours until potential interaction with the Yucatan Peninsula. After that, the majority of guidance weakens the system, but could bring it back over the southern gulf and show another small uh, uh, potential intensification. That's what the models are showing right now. Uh, the global ensemble forecast system doesn't have a lot of um, solutions run on it, but the majority of them no longer show Florida being a threat. Uh, now they're aiming towards the Yucatan and if they survive the southwest gulf. There's always going to be an exception and here's the one crazy solution that says Houston we have a problem but that's eight nine days off and things are going to change. You've seen what's happened with storms like Laura and Isa Eos and uh, nothing really nailed it eight or nine days out. I don't expect this is going to be any different. So right now we're just going to keep an eye on things. Um, if you're in Florida um, even if you don't have to worry about this you're going to get a lot of rain in the Keys and South Florida uh, over the next several days. We've got a front that's pretty much camping out not going anywhere and that's not never really good news for us here. So let's look at the driving features in the atmosphere. This is the 500 millibar upper level pattern. Um, the ensemble mean shows where the troughs and ridges are. The troughs are the cooler colors and the ridges are the warmer colors. Now troughs tend to break up ridges and allow um, a place for a storm potentially to get drawn northward. Uh, in this case, we see that potentially happening as the Yucatan shows some lower pressures here on Saturday. 
Uh, however, this ridge over the North Atlantic extends pretty far back to the Bahamas, and a few days ago it didn't look like it was going to build back to the west, but now it does, and this is great news for you in South Florida. We've got this ridge which is going to build back into the Gulf, and what that means is if, if there is a system down in here, it doesn't have anywhere north to go. In fact, it could kind of get stuck down in here for a while. Uh, so in Florida, I don't think this is an immediate concern, but what happens down the road is that this ridge does start to break down towards the second half of next week. You can see those yellows starting to gradually fade by Friday, and that allows a, a weakness uh, that's going to come underneath this ridge in Texas to try to draw another system up in that direction. And if that happens, then we may have something in the central Gulf, and with all the yellows gone by next weekend, Columbus Day weekend, we've got an avenue for a system to maybe come up into the central and eastern Gulf. Not as likely in the western as I think the central and eastern. And then beyond that, uh, we've got another ridge rebuilding, but it's too little too late at that point. By then, we could have something coming up into the southeast. So, the second system, potential delta, the first one's going to be gamma, we think, uh, is the one that we're watching. Uh, the GEFS shows the first system mostly weaker solutions here around the Yucatan and southwestern Gulf. Uh, the second system, though, a stronger potential anywhere from southeast Louisiana over into Florida. And some of these models showing an intense hurricane, others a weaker tropical system. Uh, again, too soon to say, but if you're in the Gulf, you definitely need to at least watch this. Uh, the Canadian on, uh, the Canadian operational, again, keeping the first system weak. We have lower pressure for sure. Here comes a second system, though, by next Wednesday and Thursday over Cozumel and then into the southern Gulf. And it tries to keep going northwest toward Texas, but then, remember, I noticed... I mentioned that that weakness in the northern Gulf could pick it up as the ridge breaks down. Well, watch what happens here towards the end of next week. We now have a turn quickly to the northeast, a track similar maybe to Michael or Opal. Um, so maybe not that intensity if the Canadian's right, but something that could can come into the southeast towards next weekend, especially Saturday and Sunday uh, and Columbus Day on Monday. So here's something off of the South Carolina coast, which, again, um, 10 days out, still way too uncertain to make that call. And then finally, let's look at the global ensemble forecast members. And you can see here's the first system, lower pressures near the Yucatan. And um, maybe one or two of these tries to come up but doesn't make it to Florida. But the majority have the lower pressures down in here. Uh, but as we get on into uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, here comes system number two. Number one, notice there's really nothing too much threatening the northern Gulf. It would be down in here if there's anything. But number two, uh, Cuba, the Yucatan could be threatened. And here we go into the end of next week. And... Uh, much more uncertainty, of course, but much more potential as the Gulf of Mexico comes into play towards the end of next week. So that's what we're going to watch, folks. Uh, I'll show you the European as well, which shows a few of those solutions uh, getting into the central and eastern Gulf with a turn to the right, uh, heading into the 10th through the 12th of October. So we're more concerned about the second one than we are anything else here. Oh, by the way, here could be the third one, but that's not going to be a threat at this point. So that's all I got for you guys. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get the latest and invite all your friends as well. And I'll keep you posted. Everyone have a great afternoon. God bless.